The Lord be with you. And also and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to, you, Lord. Be to you, Lord. Please turn off your cell phones. Whose cell phone is that? Please turn it off. Okay. Please have your cell phones off. Thank you so much. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon! Son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, 
Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying, but what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to Lord. you, Lord Praise Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up of thy breast. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Mercy! This is the Church of Divine Mercy, and I'm wearing this image of the Divine Mercy with the merciful Jesus, that image that is so well known everywhere, the merciful Jesus. And Reflecting on mercy, the word in Latin is misericordia. What is that? Well, in biblical times, the misericordia was a dagger, like a small knife, that a soldier, a Roman soldier, would carry with him in battle. And when he would wound somebody with his sword, but the person was not killed and was suffering. He would take out this dagger, this small little knife, and he would trust, thrust the knife into the heart of the dying person and would put them out of their misery. Hence, bringing an end to the misery, to the suffering of the person. This is the misericordia, the mercy, in the biblical understanding of mercy. In other words, killing somebody to put them out of their misery. And this is what mercy comes to do with all of us. Mercy wants to put you out of your misery. Jesus wants to kill you. Jesus wants to kill you in his mercy to this life. He wants to bring death to you. Remember when, when they asked Jesus, you know, have you come to bring peace? And he says, peace? What are you talking about? I've come to bring fire. I want you to be burning. Jesus wants to kill you to this life. He wants you to die to this life so as to live to the life to come. Dying to all your worries, all your fears, all your addictions, all your depressions, everything that is keeping you uh, miserable in this life, he wants to put you out of your misery. Hmm? That's mercy, putting you out of your misery. And that can only be experienced if you are killed to this life so as to live to the life of God in 2010, when I was ordained a priest, I was stationed in a boutique town in Sonoma, California, 
where you can't buy, you know, a chicken house for less than like a million dollars. It's a very, very rich place surrounded by wineries in the wine country of California. And in one day, because this was right after the crash of the market that happened at the end of 2008, and a lot of foreclosures happened, I met this lady there in my first assignment, my parish there in Sonoma, California. And I said there, well, how are you? How are you doing? And she says, oh, terrible. My life is over, she says. They foreclosed on our house. And we will have to move into an apartment. My life is over, she says. I, I've had to go on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medicine because we've lost our house. My life as I knew it is over. And I felt so horrible for her. I said, I'm, I'm so sorry. I will pray for you. I, can, I, I, I can't imagine what you're going through. My heart goes out to you. And that very day, God slapped me, put some sense into me, which I hope I'm doing right now to all of you who need a slap from the Holy Spirit to have some sense put into you. I met another lady and I said to her, I said, well, how you doing? And she says, well, I'm fine, she says. I said, well, what's going on in your life? You know, how are things? And she says, well, we've had our home foreclosed upon, as many at that time yeah. had their homes foreclosed upon. She says, we, we're going to have to move into an apartment. And I said, oh, I feel so sorry for you. I'm so sorry. I said, I feel so bad. And she says, Father, who cares about some mansion that I've had here on earth when God has a mansion prepared for me in heaven. Who cares about some home I've had here when God has a mansion prepared for me in heaven? You see, she lived a converted life. She was already in heaven. Heaven is not something that we expect to live when we die. Heaven, we are supposed to be experiencing right now. That's why we pray in the Our Father, Thy kingdom come. I want God's kingdom right now. Not after I die. What a sorry life. If you're expecting to be happy after you die, what a sorry way to live. You think God has put you here to suffer? No. God has put you here to be happy and to experience that happiness. You have to experience the misericordia, which is that dagger, that knife to be put into your heart to put you out of your misery, to kill you to this life so as to live to the next life, to the life of God. To live in God's life. So it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The Bible teaches us that. It's Christ who lives in me. It's no longer I, but He who lives in me. Hmm? That's mercy. That is what misericordia is all about. Now, in Hebrew, the word mercy is rahamim. Rahamim. Can you say that? Rahamim. rahamim. Perfect. There's your Hebrew lesson for today. Okay. And rahamim is the womb of the mother. So to experience mercy is to live in your mother's womb. And the baby in their mother's womb is very safe. Very safe. So they're supposed to be very safe in the mother's womb. And that's what you are supposed to be experiencing when you experience the mercy of God. The womb of your mother. That's the love of God. It's to be as protected as you are in your mother's womb. I will never forget when I was a chaplain at Pelican Bay Maximum Security State Prison in Crescent City, California, where I was pastor and also visited the prisoners in that Maximum Security State Prison. One of the prisoners was being transferred to the death row 
where he would be executed. And there was two groups protesting in front of the prison. One was in favor of the execution and the other group was not. One was there with posters saying, kill him! And the other was, no to the death penalty. It's horrible. There were two camps. And there I saw in the corner, there just was this one lady and all she was doing was crying and praying her rosary. She was not protesting, yelling like, you know, the two camps were yelling at each other. And I just see her and all she's doing is crying and praying the rosary. So I went over to her and I said, how come you're not in either of the groups? And she looks at me and she says, because that's my son that they're going to execute. I am his mother, she said. That's my son. And then I will never forget what she said. He's a good boy. You know, my son's a good boy, she said. My son is good. He made some mistakes in life, but my son is a good boy, she said. My son is not bad. My son is a good boy. Isn't that the heart of a mother? And that's how God is revealed to us in the Bible as our mother. Though a mother is capable of forgetting you, the Bible says, I will never forget you. That is God. God never forgets us. That's that image that I have of God there in front of that prison. Not yelling, kill him or save him, but crying and praying and saying, that's my boy in there. And my boy is a good boy. And that's what God says to you every time you come here. Hmm? Because you've got two camps out there always whispering and yelling at you. But God doesn't do that. God is praying for you. That's what Jesus did with Simon Peter when he said, Simon, Simon, you know, Satan has asked for you, but I'm praying for you. Mm -hmm. That's what he always does. Mm -hmm. praying for us. I am his mother. He's a good boy. That's the Lord in your life. No matter who has told you that you are bad. Hmm? God says, you are good. A mother never ceases to wait for her child with open arms. Hmm? A mother never gets tired of waiting. I will never forget when I was still in Poland and we didn't have food because it was the height of communism that my mom would never eat until me and my brother ate. And then only and only if there was food left over would she eat. Hmm? That's the heart of a mother. And to have a mother is so wonderful that even God wanted to have a mother. Did you ever think about that? That even God has a mother? To have a mother is so wonderful. The love of a mother is so beautiful and good that even God wanted to have a mother. God who is rich in mercy comes to the apostles after the resurrection as he did to us, 
right now as he does to us when we come here, God who is rich in mercy comes to the apostles for the third time today, we hear, and they are all locked up in their fear. They who have abandoned him, who have betrayed him. And Jesus doesn't yell at them or point fingers at them or judge them like a lot of the religious people do who have their faith in their finger. <laughs> like the Pharisees and the scribes today. Lots of religious people, they have their faith in their finger and they point and they're pointing all the time they point at you Jesus doesn't do that Jesus what does he do he lifts his hand like this that's why this image is so powerful because he's got his hand lifted in blessing not like this like the religious people you know that's what they do you're doing run 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 no, Jesus does this. He blesses. He doesn't judge. He saves. He doesn't condemn. Uh -huh. And that's the church who is our mother. So you come here because you, you want to experience God's mercy. Hmm? You want to experience the hello, hello. Where everybody in this place, the, the, the place of divine mercy, this is divine mercy church, you want to experience the God who has his arms outstretched to you. Hmm? Why is Jesus nailed to the cross with his hands like this? So his hands could never close. Huh? So his hands could never close. That's why he's got his hands nailed so that his hands could never come together because his hands are always open waiting for you. Hmm? That's why his hands are nailed to the cross. Hmm? And everybody is in like manner. Welcome here. You come as you are, and you hopefully leave with a blessing. Mm -hmm. That you are welcome no matter who you are. With a hand raised in blessing. Jesus' hand and my hand. And that is the real freedom. The real healing. The real mercy. Mm -hmm. When St. Francis of Assisi, how many of you have heard of him? Raise your hand if you know. He's a powerful saint. Thank you so much. Okay. When he announced that he was going to renounce this life, St. Francis, as all the saints teach us, you know, they die to this life. As to live for the life of God. That's mercy. You know, when you experience mercy, you've got that dagger to enter into your heart. That murk, you know, to kill you. I, I, so, so you no longer are alive here, but alive in the life of God. And when St. Francis experienced that, he was going to go tell his father that he was renouncing all the earthly goods and that he was now going to become a monk, a mendic mendicant. A beggar, in other words. But in order to go talk with his father, he took one of his friends so that when his father was going to be cursing him, because his father did, because he didn't understand what Francis was doing, that the friend was going to whisper into the other ear blessings. See, you come from a world where there's a lot of people who are cursing you telling you how horrible you are, how bad you are because you've been married many times or because you've had 
this or that, or because you did this or that. You, you come cursed, and you come here to be blessed. That's what the word blessing means. Benedicere, from the Latin, good speak. We bless by good words. That's what Jesus does to all of us. He blesses us. That's why you come here, just like, because you need somebody to bless you, to whisper in your ears when the bad one, the evil one, the devil, the accuser, Satan, Hasatan, in Hebrew, meaning the one who accuses you, who tells you, you know, how horrible you are, how bad you are, that you won't make it, that it's not going to be okay. You need somebody, like a Father Adam and Divine Mercy Church, <laughs> to say, no, you will be fine. You need an advocate. Advocate is the Holy Spirit. In Latin, advocatus. Uh, meaning your lawyer. You need a lawyer to speak for you. Or we also call him paraclete. Have you heard that? Paraclete? That's from the Latin paracletus. The one that stands by you. I'm at your side. You've always got Jesus. The Holy Spirit. The Blessed Mother. And then, of course, you have me to stand by your side. And I pray you've got other people by your side. That when you, become, when you get cursed, because you get cursed all the time, that somebody speaks and says, no, you're, 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 you're okay. You're beautiful. You're loved. You're fine. You're not cursed. You'll be okay. To bless you. All, you know, people, there's a lot of people who are in the condemnation business. We have to be in the salvation business. Jesus came not to condemn, not to point fingers, but Jesus came to bless. And that's what I do, and that's what I want each of you to do as well. Hmm? And we bless in this life. Now, I want to point out to you that Jesus came always through locked doors. The doors were locked. Maybe the doors of your heart are locked because of fear or whatever's going on. You know, there's a lot of people who have locked doors. You know, those doors represent our heart. But even though your doors may be locked, he can still penetrate those doors. All you have to do is be inviting to him. Mm -hmm. Give him permission. So that's what I want to invite all of you to continue to do in your life. Ask the Lord Jesus for him to come into your heart, to your life, and to fill you with all that you need, the love and the mercy and the hope today and every day in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Did you get something out of the sermon? Yes. Yeah? Okay. I worked hard on it. You did. It's beautiful. Everything yeah. you do is beautiful. Okay. You touch my heart. Really? Yes. Oh, that's so nice. That's so true. Uh, well, that's fantastic. Thank you, Father Adam. You're welcome. It was just written for you. Thank and you. And for all of you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Okay, let's stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God.